Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you today, my friend. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, guess where my Bible is open right now? It is open to the book of Leviticus. Yes, it is. If you can right now, stop, reach over, get your Bible, and turn with me to the book of Leviticus and chapter 18, and you'll quickly find out why. Leviticus chapter 18. I've got a gospel tract in my hand. Now, that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. I'm referring to a gospel tract, a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation, a plan of salvation that is for any at all, and it's through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you about the track and encourage you to get tracks from us, but let me uh, lead into our reading of Leviticus this way. Friend, what is the least read book of the Bible, at least by the people of God? Well, it's certainly not the Psalms, is it? It's not, not the Gospels, but it could be maybe Ezekiel or Zechariah, but <laughs> let's just be honest right now, you and I personally, which book of the Bible do you and I kind of shy away from the most? Well, the answer is Leviticus. We struggle to even want to read it. Now, over the years, I've talked with preachers and laymen alike about why we are so easy to push Leviticus to the side. And after these talks, I've come away with the three main reasons I've been given over the years. Here they are. Number one, people tend to think it's impossible for us to get a good understanding of all the rituals and symbols found here in the book of Leviticus. Number two, we view everything in it as being, well, obsolete, and it has no bearing on my life today. And then reason number three is we see some of the laws in Leviticus that seem, well, very, very harsh over trivial matters. And these things seem at odds with what we know about God's grace and love. So Leviticus just doesn't make sense to us. Well, today I want to give us some reasons for why we ought to read Leviticus. Don't go away. Please stay tuned. I think you're going to enjoy the broadcast. I mentioned a moment ago that I've got a gospel tract in my hand. This broadcast, Bible Tract Echoes, is the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracks Incorporated. And yes, that word tracks is T-R-A-C-T-S. We publish gospel tracts in many different languages and give them away all over the world. This is our 80th year of doing that, taking the Word of God to all the world, 80 years and counting until the Lord comes, Lord willing. The gospel track in my hand right now is rather significant, I think. It's entitled Infant Baptism. Infant Baptism, question mark. What does the Bible say? I think it's significant because as we get ready to read Leviticus, there's a lot of rituals in Leviticus and people get all bound up in them, but yet the ritual of baptism, people today will put such stock in it, and they will hopefully think their baby and their children and their grandparents are going to go to heaven because they've been baptized. When you open this track up, which says infant baptism, what does the Bible say? There's one large, bold word going kitty corner across the inside. Just one word, it says this, nothing, <laughs> nothing. You know what the Bible says about infant baptism? Nothing. On the back panel, it talks about who should get baptized, how they should get baptized, when, and it answers why. Why should somebody be baptized? Somebody should get baptized because they already know Christ as their Savior. 
It's a great gospel track. Now listen, at the end of the program, my announcer is going to come back on and give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Do that and we will send you free of charge a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. This one, Infant Baptism, will be one of the 41 tracks in there. Let's you and I become partners in gospel work today. If your Bible's open to Leviticus chapter 18, here are the opening verses of that chapter. It says this, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein you dwelt, ye shall not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, ye shall not do. Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. I'm going over now to chapter 19 and verse 2, which says this. Speak unto the congregation of the children of Israel and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. We'll stop right there with the reading of the word of God. Whenever I begin to study a book uh, of the Bible, and I'm going to do that with Leviticus, whenever I do that, I want to get the big picture of the book. I like to know how things fit together in the broad view of things. So let me give you quickly the four major sections of the book of Leviticus. So when you read it, you'll know where you're at. These four sections are going to help us to uh, put things in order in our minds. I'm going to use four words, all beginning with the letter W, for e- one each for each of the sections. Are you ready? Jot them down. Get that piece of paper out. Jot them down. Word number one is the word way, W-A-Y, way. It's based upon chapters one through seven. Here we find the way to God. Not the way to God to be saved, but how a believer approaches God. Number two is the word work. That deals with chapters eight through 15. Here we find the work of God done by the priest. They hear the tasks that the priest had to do. Word number three is the word walk based upon chapters 16 to 22. There, the walk with God is described how it's supposed to happen in laws about you and I living a dedicated life to the Lord. Then number four is the word worship. Worship, based upon chapters 23 to 27. There we find the worship of God. And here we're told the special feast days and holy days and how they are to be dealt with. Now, as I say, those are the four major sections here in the book. The way, the work, the walk, and the worship. But there is one key word that you're going to find all through Leviticus. It stands out boldly. It's the word holy. Whether it's the word holy or holiness, those kind of words appear 131 times in Leviticus. Then let me add to that the words clean and cleanness. Those are key words if you're going to worship God. Those kind of words appear 186 times. You got that? The words holy and the word clean and cleanness and so on. Now, for me and for many people who uh, give their time studying the Word of God, the key verse for Leviticus is one I read there in chapter 19. It's chapter 19 and verse 2, which the last half says this, Ye shall be holy for or because I, the Lord your God, am holy. We speak in the New Testament that God's goal for New Testament believers is that we become like Christ. Well, in the Old Testament, the goal of God for his people then was that they become like him. So, whether in the Old or the New Testament, God's goal for his people is that they be holy because he's holy, they be like him. But let me come back to my original premise for the broadcast, which is why Why in the world should you and I want to read the book of Leviticus? What value should I have in reading it? Let me give you a couple reasons, may I? Number one is this. Leviticus is going to reveal to us the character of God. Leviticus is going to reveal the character of God. The holiness of God was the one quality of his being, which he wanted these Old Testament Jewish people to understand. He wanted them to get it. 
Now, friend, that has not changed in the New Testament era. We are also called to be holy because God is holy. You remember the verse from 1 Peter. So reason number one, Leviticus reveals the character of God. Reason number two why we ought to read Leviticus is this. Leviticus gives us the basic principles on how we deal with God. I need to say that again. Leviticus is going to give us the basic principles on how we deal with God. In Leviticus, these principles are laid out using symbols. So we're going to have to put our thinking caps on and learn how you and I can see these principles and how to learn to interact with God. But these symbols are going to find their reality in our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, friend, often people read all these laws given in the book, and they start picking out the various ones that seem, well, they seem silly. One such law deals with the eating of shellfish. The eating laws are found in chapter 11. Well, the Old Testament Jew could not eat those things which had uh, no fins or scales on them. And people see these laws as being foolish. But what we fail to do is to recognize that God was saying to the Jews this, listen, people, being my followers is a lifestyle. It's going to affect how you eat, what you wear, how you deal with your farms, and so on. You and I pay such little attention to that verse over in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, which says, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. How easily we smirk at these Old Testament laws or maybe even mock them, but how lacked we become, well, let me put it this way, how unfaithful we are at making our personal lifestyles an act of worship to God. We have blocked our minds from thinking about how our relationship with Christ should be reflected in how I live, eat, dress, work, and yes, how I worship God. Years ago, a godly man showed me one New Testament verse, which he said was the synopsis, the kind of encapsulating of the entire book of Leviticus. He said, I'm quoting him now, all of Leviticus can be understood in this one verse from 1 John. And that verse is 1 John 1, 7, which says, if we walk in the light as he, God, is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, the book of Leviticus is about how to have fellowship with God and how to maintain that fellowship with God. But then it's about how we keep ourselves clean from sin so that we can maintain that fellowship with God. Don't you and I spend a great deal of time dealing with how to stay clean as believers? Well, let me ask, do you want to be in fellowship with God on a practical daily basis? Then it's going to impact the lifestyle, your lifestyle, mine from A to Z. Do you and I want to know that our heart is clean before God? Well, that will mean we're going to need to understand better the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to do that through the book of Leviticus. But our assignment for today is to walk in the light of God through his word. And it's going to impact our whole life, our life culture as a believer. But do we, we're going to do it because we want to be in fellowship with God, because that's the greatest heart desire of a believer. Oh, friend, let's walk with God. Get those tracks and let's tell people about how they can know Christ is their Savior. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.